Hi there, I'm Nabil Murad. A chart is a graphic representation of numeric values. When we create a chart in Excel, it doesn't live in a cell like the text and numbers we type. A chart is a floating object on top of the grid. You can move it, you can resize it, you can do so many things with that chart. You can even hide it by using the shortcut Control-6. In 2004, an American scientist, Edward Tuck, created a tiny chart that lives inside a cell. This tiny chart is called a spark line. And in this training video, I want to show you the different methods for creating a spark line and the different types of spark lines. And finally, I'll show you a very simple activity that you can use for encouraging young kids to learn Excel. So let's get started. There are two methods for creating a spark line. And there are three types of spark lines. In this worksheet, I have in column A an employee name. And in column B, I have some sales figures for 2014. In column C, I have some sales figure for 2015. And the change between 2014 and 2015 is in column D. And I would like to represent these values by a spark line, which is a tiny chart that lives in itself. To create a spark line, I need to go to the Insert tab, and on the Insert tab, there is an entire group for creating spark lines. So I'll click on the Insert tab, and then here is the group for creating a spark line. We have three types of spark lines. Even if you select a type and you want to change later on, it's possible to do that. So let's say I would like to create a column spark line. So I click on Column Spark Line. And the Create Spark Line dialog box pops up. So in the Create Spark Line dialog box, I have to specify the data range. So I'll select these three cells. And I would like to specify the destination as well, the location where I'll be creating my spark line. And as simple as that, when I hit OK, a spark line has been created. This is a column spark line. And the moment you create this spark line, an extra tab pops up into the ribbon. It's a design contextual tab. It has all the commands you need for dealing with this spark line. And now I can copy the spark line down. So I'll hover over the lower right corner as if it was a formula. But double clicking doesn't work, so I have to drag it down. So I'll drag it down to the entire range. When you drag the spark line down, it copies the spark line and it shows the same exact type of spark line. But the spark lines in all these cells are grouped together. If you want to ungroup them in case you want to apply different colors to the different spark lines or you want to use different types for the different cells, so you need to ungroup them. That was the first method for creating a spark line. If I want to change it, on the Options tab, I can click on a line spark line or I can select a win-loss spark line, which represents the negative numbers on the opposite side of the horizontal axis. So I can also format my spark line if I want. I can format it. I can apply different styles for the spark lines. I can select a different color, a different style. And of course, if I check the box for negative values, I'll be able to see the negative values with a different color on the opposite side of the horizontal axis. So we have different types of spark lines. I can use any one of these. And when looking at this spark line, I can recognize which cell. So I can see that uh, for record number 11, I have a negative amount and for record number 12 as well. That was the first method for creating a spark line. Let's see another example. I have the same exact list in the next sheet. And here, I would like to use a new functionality that was introduced for the first time in Office 2013 for creating a spark line by using the Quick Analysis tool. What's the Quick Analysis tool? It's a special tool that pops up whenever we make a selection, and it enables us to perform so many things because it appears as a little icon to the lower right corner of our selection. I selected a range, and toward the lower right corner, this is called the Quick Analysis tool. So if I click on the Quick Analysis tool, it offers so many functionalities for me, like conditional formatting, creating charts, creating totals, creating tables. But I would like to create a spark line, so I click on spark line. 
And here I'll, I can select the type of spark line I want, whether I want a line spark line, whether I want a column spark line. Look at that. I can see the effect just by hovering. I'll be selecting a win loss spark line. And with a single click on this command, the spark line has been created. That's an easy way for creating a spark line. Let's look at some options when creating a spark line. I'll move to the next example. In this sheet, I have some sales, some expenses, some profit for six months of the year. And then in column H, I have a total. And in column I, I have an average. Here, if I would like to create a spark line, I cannot use the second technique of the quick analysis tool for a reason. If I select the range for the six months, and I create a spark line by clicking on the quick analysis tool, select spark line. Look at that. It will be creating the spark line where you see the total. And that's not exactly what I want to do. I want to create my spark line in the first empty column. So to do this, I'll be using the first technique. I'll go to the insert tab. Make sure I'm selecting the destination cell and then click on the line spark line. I can change it later if I want a different type of spark line. I'll specify the data range, which are the sales for the six months, and I hit OK, and the spark line is created. I'll click and drag to copy the spark line down, and you would have created the spark line. Let's look at some options. So if you want to change the spark line, on the Design Contextual tab, which pops up, you can select a different type. You can select a column. You can select a win-loss if you want. I'll keep it for a column right now. And then I can, I can highlight the high point, the low point, the negative point, the first point, and the last point. By checking these options, they change some options also in the styles. And to reflect or to explain that point, uh, and to explain that point, I'm going to switch back to a line spark line. So what if I check the box for markers? Look at the markers. These points appear on each line. These are the different data points. I can select the last, the first. I can select the negative points. We have different options. When I make a selection in the show group, that is automatically reflected on the different styles. So I can select any style from this group. Let's select this one just as an example. I can also control the color and thickness of the line by clicking on the down arrow of spark line color. We have different colors. I can change the, the weight of the line. I can also change the color of the markers. And you will see here the same exact options you see in the show box. So you can change the color of each one of, the, of these individual points. After creating my spark line, if I want to change it, let's say to column. So I'm changing it for the whole group because I copied them by dragging. If you want to create individual colors, let's say I want to change the color of the spark line. If you change the color, you are changing it for all of them. You don't change it individually unless you ungroup them. So if I click on ungroup, now I can select a different color for the ungroup spark line. I can select the third one and ungroup and select a different color for the last spark line and so on. These are the different options for spark lines. If you want to delete a spark line, if you select the cell and then you hit the delete key on your keyboard, assuming that you will be deleting the spark line, it will not go away. You have to use this option, the clear command, and you select clear selected spark lines in order to get rid of the spark line. Finally, I want to share with you an activity in the next worksheet, I created some spark lines. What you see in row number two, these are column spark lines. I colored each one of these spark lines with a different color. And in row number three, I created a line spark line. The column and the line spark line were created based on these numbers. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see a set of numbers. And these numbers, if I double click on any cell to put it in the edit mode, were created by a randomizing function. What does it mean, a randomizing function? It's a volatile function, which means every time I hit the F9 key, the numbers change. And because the spark line was created based upon these numbers, so every time I hit the F9 key, the numbers change, and the spark line changes as well. And it gives the impression uh, that it's a digital equalizer. So let's test it by hitting F9. Look at that, it gives the impression that it's a digital equalizer. 
teach your kids this activity keep them engaged and learn microsoft excel thank you for watching and see you in another tutorial